I'm so excited. I am always so lit up when I have these wonderful, deep, soulful conversations. And I'm so honored and excited to be joined by you today. Just to quickly introduce you to my guests, Melissa Acuna Dengo is a mindfulness and meditation teacher, Reiki master, and inner transformation coach. She helps people release and break free from their past trauma and subconscious blocks. Wow, just reading that. I love, love, love what you do. And I want to dig deep into that. So if you can tell me just at the starting point a little bit as to how you got into this, this work in the first place. Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on here. I am so honored and I'm with you. I love these soulful conversations. So <laughs> I'm very, very excited for this. Um, and yes, I... Wow. So I always say, I feel like I've lived like 30 lifetimes in one. <laughs> it's wow. like mm. one of those. Um, so I was actually very fortunate as a kid. I learned how to meditate when I was eight years old. And my mom, she practices a lot of things. So she is very much into personal development. Um, so she taught me a lot of mindfulness techniques when I was a kid. Um, she also taught me EFT. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, emotional freedom techniques or tapping. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so that's where it started. So I feel like in many ways, it's always been a part of me. It's always been a part of my journey. Mm. Um, I was a very, very anxious kid. So that's actually um, what led my mom to kind of get me into these things help me uh, to cope and overcome my anxiety. And as I grew older, I feel like even though that was something that was, you know, it was in my childhood, mm. um, it wasn't something that I had fully embraced or really taken on or really fallen in love with myself. Um, so I feel like it was just one of those things that, you know, I'd been encouraged to do. And then as I got into my early 20s, I had had a pretty severe car accident. So I had already had several injuries because um, I used to play tennis competitively. I had really destroyed my left foot. So I'd had to have reconstructive surgery. Um, and then this car accident really jarred my back. I was in a lot of pain. And for basically three to four years, I was hobbling constantly just on crutches, using wheelchairs, like in constant chronic pain to the point that I feel like it was in many ways, it was running my life. Like I wasn't able to go to things. I wasn't able to really do things. And I constantly thought about, okay, if I have to walk more than two or three steps, like I can't do this. Yeah. So <clears throat> this was really plaguing me. And it was just one of those things that one day I, I was trying tons of different things. And I found um, a Shiatsu practitioner who he went in, but he went really deep to kind of the, the root cause. And, mm. you know, he was talking to me um, about a lot of these things that I hadn't really looked at. And I just started looking within and then I ended up um, studying Shiatsu myself and we were meditating in the middle of the Shiatsu course mm -hmm. and she was talking about the yin and yang energy in the body and she told us you know to meditate on the yang energy in our body which is that the masculine energy which is all of the the support the strength the stability and I realized in that moment that I didn't feel that I had any. Mm -hmm. I really didn't feel supported by my body. I didn't feel that I had strength. And it was just this eye-opening moment where I realized, wow, I have been holding on to so much resentment and so much hatred for my own body. And I can't even explain what happened, but just this voice, this voice spoke to me and told me, you know, just send love and I just sat there and I, I must have sat there for 30 40 minutes just sobbing like tears flowing through my eyes and just 
releasing and just sending love and gratitude to my body just Mm. my legs my knees my feet my back literally every part of my body that I had been holding on to this this resentment for and I just flooded it with love Mm. and just really long story short six months later I was hiking up a mountain in Japan (laughs) so Mm. for me that was so eye-opening and that's kind of what started my journey into exploring the mind body spirit connection mm-hmm. um and i became so passionate about it and i still am today and it's a huge part of what i do and then i really dove deep into mindfulness into mm-hmm. meditation mm-hmm. and they became these really big parts of me and who i am um and a big piece of that too was that i um I entered a a pretty deep depression and my anxiety was really flaring up again. And I heard myself, I remember this one specific moment where I was just a mess on the floor. Like I was just lying there and I heard myself say things that nobody should ever say to themselves. Hmm. And I had these thoughts that quite frankly terrified me. Hmm. And if you've read The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, like I had a very similar moment to him where I realized like as I was lying there and I heard these thoughts, I realized that I was not my thoughts. And I think that was the first time that that became really clear to me, that I was able to see myself as the observer and to recognize that if I am not those thoughts then I am something else and I can overcome those thoughts and I can actually just accept them and be with them and honor them and yet not take them on. And that was so huge. That was kind of that, that really pivotal moment for me where I said, okay, I don't need to live this way. And I'm not going to accept this for myself anymore. And that was really the start of my huge healing journey um, where I, I just dug deep and I went in and I explored all of these things that I had been holding on to. And it was almost like this, jar that where I had bottled everything up for such a long time it just kind of burst open (laughs) and everything I just it Mm. did yeah and I just had to look at it all um and yeah that was a starting point so that was when I really dove deep into mindfulness and meditation and I really I first built my own practice Mm -hmm. and I would say I I practiced it very regularly for about two years um And then I decided to become certified because it was just, it had changed my life so drastically that I thought, okay, I, I need to do this and I need to teach this to people. Hmm. Well, that's such a beautiful story. And thanks for being so open and vulnerable sharing that because, you know, it's, you've, you've gone through quite a few things and you're able to (laughs) now in reflection, look back and see how impactful and, and powerful the shifts have been. And I think what's really important as well and i and i myself um feel very strongly about this is then then we somewhat have a responsibility to pay it forward and Mm -hmm. and you're using this in your work now where you're able to help people overcome a lot of the things that you yourself have gone through but you can do that from a much more embodied practice Mm -hmm. Um, and like you i've been meditating from a really young age as well um my my siblings and i we were very fortunate to grow up in an environment of meditation as well I remember being six and seven. And even though now in reflection, it's, oh, I'm so glad I did it. Then it was like, oh, do I really need to get up at five in the morning for the sunrise meditation? And then when I got there, I was just like, how could I not? And I miss them now. I don't get the sunrise, the sunrise as beautiful here in London city. But um, I, I really think that what you're, what you were speaking about, about the yin and the yang, that masculine and feminine energy, I'd love to go a little bit deeper into that. It's, uh, it's an interesting area and I feel a lot of the people that I work with, in, you know, even in my own journey and my own quest, that having that masculine and feminine energy being something that a lot of people need to look at, it's very, very, mm. it's needed. And I myself remembered thinking, wow, I, I know that there's some balancing that's needed. And it came through um, a meditation that I had when I had a, a particular um, ailment. And I'm just like, well, what is this coming up? Because for me, a lot of the things, it's certainly my view that when we are experiencing something in a physical 
capacity it's it is related to something energetically and therefore you know it's there is a way into that healing that's not just the physical you know exercise or movement and such and so when this came up the first thing i said to myself was okay i'm listening what is this about mm -hmm. and what came through was very much about that balancing of the feminine and masculine because the masculine energy was not as potent as i knew it needed to be so mm -hmm. i'd love to talk more about that and find out more about how you perhaps help people do that now or just a little bit more about your own journey into the embracing the masculine oh yeah for sure um so what's interesting about my own journey with it is that as a kid, I, I wouldn't say I was quite a tomboy, but I was, I was very athletic and I, for some reason from, from a very young age, I kind of rejected these, <laughs> like, I don't want to say the, the patriarchy, but, you know, just really these ideas um, mm. of what a girl should be and what, you know, I, I didn't like the color pink and, you know, mm. I did play with dolls and things like that, but I definitely um, kind of wanted to, to em embrace more of like the, the stronger kind of side. And mm. um, I guess I didn't really know, you know, what that really meant for me at the time. Um, but as I grew older, I definitely, I had more male friends than I did female friends. And there came a point where I realized that in many ways, I was rejecting my own femininity. And where I, for, for whatever reason, like I felt and, and I do, I do know where that comes from. It stems really from a lot of things that happened in my childhood mm -hmm. with female friends and, you know, dynamics that played out. I was bullied a lot and mm -hmm. I was actually bullied more by girls than right. by guys. Mm -hmm. So I think that I kind of took on this belief that, you know, with, with women or, you know, that interaction is going to be, it's more competitive or whatever those beliefs were. Mm -hmm. And I think again, during this journey, when, once I, I started this journey of going within and looking at it, I began um, to see just the beauty in my divine feminine and seeing how the more that I embraced that, the more I came back to who I really was. And because I am very naturally a very feminine person. And it's funny because I was really rejecting that. And what was happening there was it was creating a huge misalignment within me and just this huge disconnect. Mm. And I began to really tap into that and to see. And with that came my intuition. That came my inner wisdom and my ability to nurture and not just nurture other people, but also myself, which was so huge. Yeah. And I'd always had this desire to help others and to to really be there for others and I think a big piece for me was just learning to be there for myself learning to support yeah. myself mm. so then I really embraced that the divine feminine within me which mm. is all of that that side of just of nurture of love of intuition and you know that that fluid mm. side and then um what's interesting though and I, I think what I did was almost like an overcorrection <laughs> where <laughs> I entered so much into the feminine <laughs> that my whole practice, my whole being became so feminine, <laughs> right? Like, mm. and um, it's so, it's so interesting because I went from bottling up my emotions to completely embracing them, right? Yes. To the point that I'm a very emotional person. I definitely am. Like, I... You know, I, I allow my emotions to guide me and allow them to be that that guiding point, that North Star in many ways, you know, where when something's coming up, I know I need to look at it. I know I need to listen and mm. pay attention and get that information. Um, and then for me, so after that, my journey has been rebalancing again. So really embracing the divine masculine as well. Mm -hmm. So knowing that 
when we have both, when we are able to hold both and embrace both our divine feminine and masculine, that's when we are completely aligned and we feel mm -hmm. whole. And it's funny, like the, the viewers can't see, but I actually have a yin yang symbol right, right behind me. You're, <laughs> you're bringing that into your space. Just a great reminder. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely, because it's it's so key. I mean, because we all have those aspects inside of us. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the time, um, and I know that this, I've spoken to many men who have been taught to almost reject their feminine side, yeah. right? reject their emotions, reject that vulnerability and that side of them, right? Mm -hmm. And when I, and I, and I've met like incredible men who have been able to embrace that mm -hmm. and it's so beautiful because you can see them you know yes. standing in their power and being strong and going for their desires and yet able to hold mm -hmm. that vulnerability as well and hold their emotions yeah. so it's really huge and I do um a lot of the clients I work with are women not all mm -hmm. I would say most which is very interesting it's been a very a beautiful turn, I think, for me, mm -hmm. where once I really embraced that, um, I I had now have so many beautiful connections with women. Yeah. I actually started running women's circles, which is it's so it's all yeah, part it's, of the healing as well, isn't it? <laughs> we we often kind of manifest what we need as well, you know, being there to shine and help others. But you know, I know as a coach, often in in a, a session with my clients, I say to them exactly what I need to hear. Um, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm so glad that this was happening. I'm a catalyst for you, but you're also a catalyst for me. And I'm very grateful for that. Um, so for someone listening who might think, well, how do I even know that my masculine and feminine is not really balanced? Is there, are there any telltale signs? Do you think there are things that you can say, this is kind of how you know you're not quite balanced in that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So when you are more in your feminine and let's say you're not quite embracing your divine feminine you're you're more sort of in the feminine um in kind of from coming from a wounded space mm -hmm. um a lot of the tendencies that come up there are people pleasing like self-sabotage mm -hmm. there's a lot of um squashing your own desires your own needs and wanting to look externally for validation like that's that's a huge one mm -hmm. um so really looking and seeking outside of yourself for answers for validation mm -hmm. and not embracing that that inner wisdom that we have right yeah. um and it's really about not being able to speak up that's a huge one like mm -hmm. not being able to be assertive so being really stuck in not wanting to hurt other people's feelings Right. right. But, but coming at it from that place of then, okay, I then can't express myself. I can't express my opinions. And, mm -hmm. um, a lot of that wounded feminine is that energy of, I need to make myself smaller. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, if you've been going through any of that, then most likely, um, your feminine is not balanced. Right. And then the masculine side. So for the masculine, the masculine is a lot about, strength about power but power in really just embracing your inner power right in mm -hmm. in that like looking at who you are and being able to put that out in the world and say okay like i have strength i have power and being assertive um and being able to communicate you know what it is that you need um however with the unbalanced masculine the issues there are really about not embracing the emotional side, right? Mm -hmm. So it becomes a lot about like competition um, and just only the, again, like an external source, mm -hmm. right? An external source of reward almost, right? It's like just, we're just seeking that, but we're not going within um and so the feminine is a lot about you know going within and embracing your own beauty your own emotions your intuition and so when they are not balanced and you can tell when you're more in one than the other because let's say you 
do embrace like one right you embrace your divine feminine that's really beautiful right so that means you're very empathic you're very caring you're very kind you know you can hold a space for people you can listen right and it's it's beautiful you're very in tune with your emotions and your intuition however you can still if you haven't uh, embraced your divine masculine you can still have issues with communication with yeah. speaking up right with being able to really share what it is that you need mm -hmm. and from that space of i am empowered right i am centered and you know i am here and i feel good and i can support you from that space mm -hmm. that's so, beautiful yeah <laughs> i love that so i just wanted to ask you a bit more about emotion because you you spoke about it a few times and you say that sometimes you're guided by your emotions so my my train of thought around emotion is that it's energy in motion so emotion energy in motion and that certainly from a very practical level it is not always wise to make decisions from an emotional place mm -hmm. um so i want to know more about when you speak about being guided by mm -hmm. your emotions because i sense that's not what you mean but i don't mm -hmm. want to assume that mm -hmm. i would love you to explain a little bit more <laughs> about what being guided by emotion is for you absolutely and i'm so glad that you brought that up because that isn't uh what i mean by that so i agree right. with you that making decisions from a really emotional state mm -hmm. is not <laughs> it's not going to be the most beneficial <laughs> choice no <laughs> um but what i mean by that is that you know we've been taught that emotions are either positive or negative right and that there are certain emotions that we need to embrace and there's certain emotions that we need to let go of right so there's mm -hmm. there's a lot of that and I've noticed with many, many people that there are patterns of suppressing certain emotions yes. because they feel it's wrong or it's negative or so anger is a big one, right? Mm. So anger is one that a lot of people don't allow themselves to feel mm -hmm. because they feel that it's, it's negative. They have yeah, right. this preconceived notion that, oh, I, I can't be angry because that's, that's not a good thing. It makes me... And, almost like they tie it to their identity. Like it makes me a bad person if I'm angry. Um, and I have to admit that for a long time, I was like that where I didn't let myself get angry. Mm. And now, you know, having gone through, you know, these courses, the studies that I've gone through, like what I've really come to learn is that, or I really believe that emotions are not positive or negative they just are mm -hmm. and I'm of the same belief as you they're just it's energy and motion mm -hmm. and I I take it you know this step further where I really believe that emotions are information that's really mm -hmm. what they are and that they almost come as like a guide and a friend in the in the sense that they have a message for you they have something to share yeah. so um there's a, a Rumi quote that, um, that I really love, and I no, I don't want to botch it up, but it's um it's called his poem is called the Guest House, and I just mm. I recommend that you check it out because it's really beautiful. It's really about welcoming your emotions in as guests, mm. and when I say I'm guided by them, so when I feel an emotion coming up, right? I feel an emotion bubbling. I feel something surfacing. And I've done a lot of work on myself that I have really gotten in touch with my own body. Mm -hmm. So I know what each emotion feels like. I know what it means when like my stomach starts kind of rumbling a little mm -hmm. bit, or when I start to feel just a tiny feeling in my chest, or, you know, even a little bit of heat in my face or a little slight twitch like I know what that means I know that there is an emotion that's bubbling mm -hmm. and so rather than what I would have done in the past or like what a lot of people do like trying to distract myself or trying to move away from it or even suppress it like you know mm -hmm. we're just nope nope we're not going to feel that nope we're going to just push that down because that's not good yes. right because what you resist persists, right? And it's mm. coming up for a reason. So coming back to my example of anger, anger usually means that some kind of boundary has been crossed. Mm -hmm. So rather than 
judging yourself for feeling angry, which is what a lot of people do, right? And, you know, either they suppress their anger, which can manifest in physical ailment and a lot of other things, Mm -hmm. um, or they let their anger take over and they get controlled by their anger. And then maybe they lash out or they do things that they wouldn't want to do. Um, You know, rather than doing all of that, it's about having that practice where you notice like, okay, I, I, I start to notice like, oh, huh, interesting. Like I noticed that my fists are clenching mm-hmm. and I'm getting heat in my face and my heart has started pounding a little bit faster. So, huh, that's anger. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. So what is this anger trying to tell me? And what yeah. I do is I actually sit and I have a conversation with it, which mm-hmm. sounds a little strange to people. But what I do is I'll actually give myself space. I'll go and I'll sit down somewhere, you know, somewhere peaceful. Um, I'll usually go outside in nature and then I'll start having a conversation like, okay, anger, like what's going on? <laughs> Why are you coming up? What do you want to tell me? And it's usually like I mentioned about a boundary. So I ask myself, well, what boundary has been crossed here? Yeah. What is this boundary that maybe I haven't enforced for myself or I haven't set, mm-hmm. or maybe I didn't respect my own boundary enough, right? To make it clear to someone that mm-hmm. this boundary is important, right? And then I start looking at that and I start unpacking right. it and I say, mm-hmm. just get really curious, right? Like that is, and curiosity is a huge piece of what I do, but getting really curious about my emotions and saying, rather than, you know, judging them, getting angry at them, you know, creating that feedback loop, I'm actually just saying, okay, I'm willing to listen. I'm willing Mm -hmm. to learn because I know that there is something coming up here. And so I don't make a decision in that moment, but once I have taken that learning, right. And I have allowed that emotion to speak to me Mm -hmm. and to come up and move through me so that it's no longer impacting me. I'm not in that state of fight or flight. I'm actually in that state of learning. It's like, okay, now I've processed this learning. I've taken it on, you know, maybe I've journaled about it. I've meditated on it, whatever, whatever that is. Now from that space, I can make a decision. But the reason I say it's I'm guided by it is because if I hadn't felt into that emotion, if I hadn't had that conversation with it, I wouldn't now have that knowledge, Mm -hmm. right? I wouldn't have that. And I can actually make a wiser choice because now I know where where I need to go. I love that. I completely resonate. And I, and I was hoping that that's what you meant to be honest with you. Um, I I sensed rather that that's what you meant. Um, But I always like to ask and dig deeper because you know, people listening, we all have different filters and the way Mm -hmm. we view things. And I think it's a really important distinction that you've made. And Mm -hmm. I completely resonate with what you're saying. I've had many conversations with Fair. Um, We've had, we've we've got a great relationship, actually. We we talk a lot. (laughs) Um, But it's wonderful being able to recognize, again, that their their information, it's like the current Mm -hmm. of which things are just running through. And that energy moving in us, as you so aptly pointed out, we represent that in, in, in a very physiological way. I mean, I talk a lot about this because I do quite a few workshops using sound and and voicing to help people to overcome emotions and challenges. And the one that I did recently really was about, well, you know, when you are angry, not only do do you feel something in your body, but your tone changes, your Mm -hmm. breathing might become more erratic. So things have a particular frequency and resonance in the body. And as you said, it's not negative or positive. It just is. So you're just noticing what is it that this energy or this feeling sensation is trying to tell me or teach me. Mm-hmm. And that, that deep listening and, and as you say, asking questions consciously as well is really key. So what I do is I literally say, well, what does it sound like? What does that feeling of anger sound like? Because even when we're conversing and we are in a state of frustration, we might go, ah, there's this mm-hmm. tension in our, we tense our fists, right? Our throat gets tight and we're all like, tension. So that's this frustration. So what it, what, what's the opposite of that for you? What do you want to feel instead? Or getting into that through the body by oh, opening mm-hmm. the throat and relaxing and sighing and connecting. 
Um, but I have to ask you because I'm really curious <laughs> about the curious in your work. So you spoke about <laughs> curious just now in, in terms of being curious about the emotion and curious about the information, curious about the learning. And I love that. And you are the, the founder of Curiously Connected and that's your <laughs> brand. So curiosity is huge for you. Talk a lot about, <laughs> talk to me about the curious piece. Oh yeah, absolutely. I would love to. <laughs> so yes, curiosity. Oh, I, I love it. Like this, it's something I'm really, really passionate about. And mm -hmm. it's funny. A lot of people ask me that, like, oh, why, why is your company called curiously connected? Like what is the, the curiosity piece? Right. And for me, curiosity has a, been a huge part of my journey. So I was a really, really curious child, as you know, many of us are. And I was one of those kids that asked a million questions right? like all the time. <laughs> um, and I, I love reading and I've always loved learning. So there's always been an aspect of curiosity. Like it's, mm. it's been huge. And I think for myself, as well as, you know, most people, there comes a point where we're told to stop being curious, right? Like we're told not to be curious or stop asking so many questions or, mm. you know, we have all these phrases like curiosity killed the cat, right? Yeah. But be seen, not heard or whatever it exactly. is. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I think at some point I started to believe that maybe being curious wasn't, um, you know, beneficial or that I shouldn't, I shouldn't explore it. Mm. And yet, I have to say that when I was in the midst of my depression, like, and I'm, for anyone who has experienced like deep depression, mm. I'm sure you can agree with me that a huge part of depression is, is that apathy that you feel, right? So it actually becomes a lot about just being really stuck and not, not caring. So like not caring about anything and all the things that you used to find joy in you don't you know and and you're in that space where you're not looking at the world from a very curious or excited state right you're just you're stuck and you're stuck in the past and you're really stuck in a lot of regret a lot of um really intense emotions and for me i i really have to say that the gateway to healing was curiosity and in mm. fact, I'm actually writing a book about this, but yes. I believe that the opposite of depression is not joy. It's not happiness. It's mm. curiosity because it's when you actually start allowing that curiosity to come through you. And, and I, so my philosophy is called loving curiosity. Um, mm. That's actually what I encourage all my clients to enter a state of what I call loving curiosity, because it's really about love and curiosity combined. Mm -hmm. So it's starting to look at life, yourself, other people, situations, and adversity, right? With, with as much love and curiosity as you can. And what that mm -hmm. looks like is rather than having judgment, rather than having blame, it's opening yourself up to the possibility mm. that things are happening for you, right? And really understanding, like wanting to know. So I always kind of say it's like becoming that observer, like a little scientist, right? And I can almost imagine a kid with a big magnifying glass looking at the ants, right? Like That's so your book cover. It's, <laughs> yeah, maybe it is. Yes. <laughs> but it's about tuning in with that air of curiosity. So when I started doing that, right? So rather than, so the moment I made a decision that I wanted to heal, mm -hmm. right? Something really came through me that it was just coming back to that curiosity when I was a child. Mm -hmm. And so I actually started looking back at my life rather than looking at it from that lens of regret, of blame, of judgment. Mm -hmm. It was just an air of curiosity of like, hmm, I wonder why, you know, or I wonder what this is about, or what was the mm -hmm. purpose of that? And then really being able to ask a lot of questions, but from that space of just, I'm an, I'm an observer, I'm a scientist and I'm yes. exploring. 
And then when you make it an exploration, it becomes fun, right? Yes. It brings more joy, more play. It just becomes this, this state of just constant unfolding where you're just like a child playing and a game you're like in an adventure game right and you're like yes. okay so so this this situation is coming up for me and it feels challenging there's mm -hmm. a lot of difficult emotions coming up right now and rather than now creating this feed, feedback loop of oh like why is this happening now I'm judging myself like no I'm actually just gonna allow myself to get curious mm -hmm. and I don't know if like if you can actually, as you're listening, if everyone can just take a moment and just mm -hmm. feel the difference. So maybe think about something challenging that you've been going through lately. Think about a situation that maybe, you know, you've been struggling with something that has just felt really hard mm -hmm. and just notice the difference. So when you get into your head about it and you get into that space of questioning of you know coming at it from a place of judgment a place of blame just notice what that feels like in your body notice what that feels like it's very restrictive it's very contracting it's very like i could actually feel my own like shoulders coming slumping forward right and as soon as you let go of that so you breathe that out let that go and actually allow yourself to just get curious about it. Mm. So just enter that state of childlike curiosity, just breathing in that curiosity and just wondering, you know, if this is happening for me, right? What is, what is the intention? What am I meant to learn? How am I going to grow from this? And that, I don't know about you, but for me, that feels so much more expansive. Like it feels <laughs> just is. so freeing, right? It just feels yes. so different. And it it's, yeah, good. it's about approaching every situation with that, right? So anytime anything comes up or you're having a conversation with someone, right? Like even now, like we're, we're getting to know each other. We're exploring, yeah. we're feeding off of each other's energy, right? Yes, exactly. But it's the same thing with anybody that you are interacting with, you know, mm -hmm. especially if maybe it's a slightly difficult interaction, maybe it's mm -hmm. someone that you've been having some challenges with, right? Yes. It's about getting curious, allowing yourself to just open up, to understanding so listen to understand them mm. you know and get really curious almost like they're this this puzzle right <laughs> but like yes. ooh, I want to know this person I want to understand them I want to see where they're coming from you know mm. you're, you're also a, a master NLP practitioner so you know understand their model of the world right yes, like how exactly. do they see the world yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think that's, it's, it's beautiful. This curiosity piece, I got goosebumps. I got this moment of, <laughs> uh, it, you know, bliss when you spoke about, um, the opposite of depression isn't for you. It's not joy and happiness. It's curiosity. And I love that. And I have to put that as your quote because it's amazing. I love it. <laughs> There's so much to unpack there because this, mm -hmm. there was a lot of research out there as well around being in the state of curiosity, um, the, the way it ignites those those neurotransmitters in the brain and how it can help us to release some endorphins and so it it all it makes sense in a way that that's the way through those moments of apathy or depression or so that it's igniting something that then can bring us into a, a much more a joyful state not being the opposite but curiosity being a massive vehicle Mm -hmm. um and catalyst for the shifting as well I I, mm. I love that I love that and to delve into that a little bit more I I talk about curiosity um I had a conversation actually with with someone else some time ago and she spoke about that curious piece in terms of exploring the voice and using the voice in her background as singers and I recognize in my own work that when you come from a place of what I think the words you use is what is um what is this bringing for me? It's so there is this questioning of whatever is going through, even in the challenge, there is something for me here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's not against me. It's not 
Mm-hmm. that and I am this but there's a learning a possibility and a platform for learning in every opportunity and every challenge and in everything that we go through and the other piece of of exploration and play and just thinking of it like that I use this a lot when I work with people who feel have a, a strong fear of failure or making mm-hmm. mistakes or things like that And I said, well, when you're, you know, in a science lab at school, when you're learning about mixing all of these chemicals and substances, you don't go in thinking, okay, um, you put this in, you put that in, you see a bit of a poof and you go, oh, okay, so that's not good. Let's try this. And, you know, Mm -hmm. we have this curiosity in that space Mm -hmm. that we often lose and we think, oh my gosh, suppose it explodes. Well, then you know how to make something explode. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> right? in, and in, in that play and that experimenting, I think a lot has been lost, as you say, mm-hmm. through the conditioning and the conditioning and the society and a lot of different things that, you know, we all go through and, and experience. And I think what I'd love to know is if you could say there is a formula, let's call it, mm-hmm. of reigniting as an adult, reigniting curiosity. Is there Mm. something that you think, does anything speak to you right now around here's what you do? Oh, that's a really good question. (laughs) The first thing that came up for me was about getting into your heart space. Mm. I think that is so huge. So a lot of us live in our head, right? Like a lot of People are walking around, you know, like a floating head almost, right? <laughs> like it's you know, head on a stick just, as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's kind of what I see it as. And and the thing is, when you are constantly in your head and in your thoughts, you're actually cutting yourself off from your body, from your emotions, and from mm-hmm. your heart. Mm-hmm. And curiosity, I believe, lives in your heart. It lives in your heart space. So it is that that childlike nature that we all have Mm -hmm. and that we cut off at some point, you know, and I think a lot of people believe that being an adult (laughs) means we have to be serious. We have to, you know, we have to take ourselves seriously and everything is all about, you know, work, work, work and responsibilities and, you know, and they forget what it's like to play. They forget Mm -hmm. what it's like to be curious and to just explore And I really believe that comes from your heart. So for me, um, at least the way the way that I see it is about allowing yourself to to be and to enter that state. So finding things that bring you joy. Mm -hmm. So maybe asking yourself the question, like, what did I do as a child Mm -hmm. that brought me joy? You know, what were the things that I loved doing that just made me feel free? You know, whether it was singing, dancing, drawing, painting, writing, you know, whatever that looked like for you. Mm. And just asking yourself that question, okay, what is it that brought me joy? Mm -hmm. And then doing more of that, allowing yourself that space to just do something that just feels fun, that feels light, that Mm. feels freeing. Right. And then I feel like naturally, as you start to do those things, you start to get more into your heart, Mm -hmm. right? You start to connect more inside. And then of course there's practices, you know, for stilling the mind, quieting Mm -hmm. the mind, allowing, you know, meditation is a big one. So really allowing yourself to just be Mm -hmm. and literally like, I, I love to just like place my hands over my heart and just feel it like feel my heart and you know first just feel the physical like beating of my heart but then also listen right and it's really about listening and tuning in and going inside and asking questions right and then as you do that you get more naturally curious Mm -hmm. and I think the thing is that you know it's it's this beautiful unfolding when you allow yourself to get a little bit curious (laughs) and then you get an answer and then it becomes really fun and then you start to enjoy yourself more and to live more in joy and play then you get even more curious and the curiosity starts building and as you said it absolutely is a catalyst and that's really how I see it so even just asking yourself simple questions like journaling is a huge one as well I I feel like journaling 
for me has been a huge part of my healing and also that inner connection with myself, like, you know, beginning to have a channel between my conscious and subconscious mind yes. where I start to get answers. Mm -hmm. And then what's really cool is again, it's like, you know, imagine if um, you're a little kid and you come across like, I don't know, some genie or, you know, whatever. Yes. And you ask a question and you get an answer. Like even like, I don't know if you ever played with like a magic eight ball. <laughs> it's I have, it's yeah. kind of funny, but as a kid, you're like, it's so fun, right? You're like, oh, I have a question. I'm going to ask. I'm going to shake yeah, this yeah. ball and I'm going to get an answer. And then I get an answer and then it's fun. It's like, oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to ask another question, right? And so it starts to build. And then before you know it, it's like you're, you're, you're back to that, that childlike curiosity and that, that joy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's such a beautiful place to be. Yeah. Yes. I love that. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, here's some more curiosity. Here's some more curiosity. What is your, your definition of healing? Oh, it's a good question. Um, I think that for me, it's kind of twofold. Um, one, in one sense, I believe that it's about coming back to yourself. Um, so it's really coming back to the heart of who you are, um, which ultimately is love, right? We all our love and we have love within us and all around us so it's really it's coming back to that coming back to love mm -hmm. um and looking at all of the pieces that don't feel good that are keeping you in that space of of disconnection of misalignment of you know whatever that is that that place of struggle so it's mm -hmm. it's again you know <laughs> the curiosity piece but like you know, getting curious, turning the lens, right? Turning that flashlight inwards and looking at those things. Mm. And then, you know, making a decision that you are going to shift them. Yeah. And, you know, from um, a neuro-linguistic programming perspective as well, yeah. I, think, I think it's about patterns, right? So put very, very, very simply, right? So everything is energy, mm. right? There's energy all around us, within us, around us. And in energy, like energy is transmuted when there is a pattern in the energy and everything has a pattern to it, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it's really about looking at that pattern, right? And saying, okay, which mm -hmm. pattern isn't working for me? And then just changing that pattern. That's mm -hmm. really all it is. And I would say it's about changing a pattern to the, the opposite of it, right? So... For example, if someone has a deep fear or phobia of snakes, that is a pattern, right? It's a pattern within their subconscious that is creating that reaction and that physiological reaction to snakes. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is to change that pattern around snakes so that you see them in a different way, right? So it's changing that internal representation of what mm -hmm. that is. So I think it's the same for, for everything, for thoughts, for beliefs, you know, for um, even physical ailments, right? It's mm -hmm. a pattern. And it's, it's crazy when you, you know, you think of it that way, like even a broken leg, right? If you look at it, that's a pattern, right? It's yeah. a pattern in, in the way that the bone, right, yes. has now shifted. It's, it has a different structure to it now. And what you need to do in order to, to heal that, right, mm. is to change that pattern. Okay, so how do you do that? Okay, you set it, you know, you put a cast, whatever that is, that's the very physical aspect, but it's the same for thoughts, it's the same yeah. for emotions, it's the same for, you know, any kind of pattern. I really believe it's just about changing it, you know. Yeah, and a lot of the work that I do in the sound healing world as well, it, it's, it's, it's matching that in that the energy, the patterns that are formed when there's certain resonance or frequency and because we, as you said, our energy, that we're living on a vibrational planet, everything is vibration, there are patterns within that. And we see a lot of that research in cymatics where, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever looked at this stuff, or there's so many YouTube videos where you could literally have a plate of sand or rice or some, some kind of, 
um, physical form and, pl and place it on a plate of frequency and turning the frequency to a very specific, you know, turning the, the sound to a very specific frequency. And you can see the, the mandalas or the form or the patterns that come based on the frequency of sound. You change it, it changes. You come back to it, it comes back to identically the same one. So there's so much research out there to show this. And this is why energy and patterns and using sound in the way that I like to has been so powerful as well in medicine because a cancer cell has a very particular frequency, a very particular sound or pattern that's very different to a healthy cell. Mm -hmm. And there's mm -hmm. so much that you can do to help to entrain and shift the pattern to something else. And, and it's phenomenal that we're just scratching the surface when it comes to working with the mind and energy and, mm -hmm. and all of this yummy stuff that we love so much. Mm -hmm. um, and we have, a, we have a very similar background because I, I use NLP as well, but I also use TFT, which is very similar to EFT, oh, so tapping yeah. techniques. So, I'm so we're so, I didn't know we had all of these <laughs> in common at all, Melissa, but it's really, I'm sure this is one of many conversations. I'll definitely have to have okay. you come back when you're getting ready to get your book out because I can't wait to read that. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> that's going to be fun. Um, and I just want to say, I could talk to you for, I could talk to you for a really long time and keep <laughs> going. Um, I'm just really excited by the work you're doing. And I really just want to acknowledge that and to celebrate what you're doing using this curiosity and all of the life experiences that have come your way to allow yourself to go through the healing that helps you come back to you. And I know this is not a destination. It's a, it's a journey and a quest that we all keep going through as long as we're alive. Mm -hmm. But being able to turn those gifts around or those opportunities and challenges around to be able to help others, I salute you because I think it is really important. It's a, it means a lot to have people like you doing the work that you're doing. I think we need a lot more of it. So I just want to acknowledge that and say thank you, thank you, thank you for your time on that. Um, I do have a final question for you, and that is, what is your soulful sound to the world? So, a, a, you know, a prayer or desire that you wish upon the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so before I say that, I just want to acknowledge you as well and say thank you so much for the work that you're doing and for this this beautiful podcast on this platform to really share with the world and to you know shine shine your light as well and it's it's so beautiful um so i would say that my my prayer my message um for anyone listening is may you approach every situation and interaction with love compassion and curiosity <laughs> May you tap into your inner wisdom, embrace your inner light, and shine it to the world. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just got to breathe that in. That was awesome. And so are you. Thank you so much for your time, <laughs> Melissa. I'm sure, like I said, we'll speak again. But until then, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please feel free to share it with your friends and remember to subscribe. From my heart to yours, sending you love, healing, and sound wherever you are.